like to welcome Cam Young to the interview room here at uh, 2023 John Deere Classic. Cam, it's your first start in this tournament, making your debut here. You were uh, PGA Tour Rookie of the Year last year. You've had a chance to play all nine today of the front, and I think you played the back nine yesterday. What are your first impressions of the TPC Deer Run? Um, I really enjoyed it. It's I'm, uh, I'm from the Northeast. I know this is not the Northeast, but the grasses are very similar. Um, Kind of the terrain is very similar, so it's it's a comfortable place. I like I like that the tree lines kind of give you a very clear picture of the shots you're supposed to hit, um, and I think there's some fun shots out there. It's it's not particularly demanding off the tee, I would say. I think it's very important to be in the fairways, but the fairways are wide enough that if you drive it well, you're going to hit a lot of them. And I think it's a really fun second shot golf course. I mean, there's even just on the front nine today, I, that second shot on nine is fantastic. Um, I think it's – even one's really cool. The little wedge you have to hit on, um, I think it's four, kind of like an infinity-looking green. Mm -hmm. um, it's a really cool shot. So I, I think there's a bunch out there that are a lot of fun, and I, I'm excited to get going tomorrow. Did you, as you were growing up as a youngster, did you watch this event on television? Mm -hmm. And is there any specific sort of memory or memories that you have of this event? Um, I mean, I, I think anybody remembers Jordan. Mm -hmm. um, I, obviously, I, I was, he was 19. I was probably 14. Um, so I, I remember that. And um, just, you know, thinking that I was hoping that could be me in a few years. So obviously, I'm, you know, about seven years behind him um, on, my, on my schedule to win a PGA Tour event. Um, but... He, uh, you know, that, that's, a, that's a memory I had here. And, and I, I watched a lot of golf growing up. I mean, this is one that I remember Steve Stricker's three wins in a row. Um, I feel like there's been some really cool things that have happened here, and, and it's one that I definitely remember. Before we take some questions, if you have, we'll just uh, raise your hand and we'll get you a microphone. But before we take any, just uh, how would you assess your season this week? You were pretty strong through March and April, had some yeah. good finishes. But how would you assess your overall season following your rookie of the year season? Um, I think, I think the, <clears throat> sorry, I think the finishes don't really capture how I've played. Um, I played really well at the U.S. Open and kind of missed everything for a couple of days and then made three doubles in a row on Sunday. So you look and you say, ah, oh, well, you know, he shot whatever, two over or three over for the tournament. But, like, I was in 11th with seven holes to go and I wasn't going to win but I could have finished fourth like if it goes you know I'm, I hit one good shot and make a putt all of a sudden I'm in fifth or sixth place and you're like oh man you had, you're having a great year because you've got a seventh and a fifth in majors um, so I feel like I feel like the finishes are not really indicative of how I've played honestly I played really nicely at the Travelers I had a couple really bad putting days um, and then one day that I hit the driver absolutely everywhere trying a new driver um, so I finished 60th, but realistically I played pretty well three of the four days. And, you know, if a, a couple putts go in or I, I don't try something new like an idiot with the driver, um, maybe it goes very differently. So I, I feel like the, I'm playing pretty well. I'm working on a lot of good stuff. And uh, I'm just kind of waiting for, for that work to, to shine through a little bit. A description of how it's such a fine line out here. Yeah. Um, we'll start with... Uh JT, you're on the front. Well, talk about that. You haven't won yet. Is it frustrating? The Thank fact you for reminding you, me. Yeah. I'm, I'm <laughs> sorry. No, I know. No, but is it frustrating? Does it grind on you a little bit that you're not where Jordan is? Um, not, not necessarily. Certainly not in reference, really, to anybody. Um, it. I would say it's something that I want to achieve. It's not something that I go to bed thinking about that it bothers me. Um, and if you look back, all of my good finishes, like I, I mean, I've finished second a bunch of times. I don't know how many. Um, I've lost by one finishing third a couple times. And none of those tournaments were right here in my hands, and I threw them away. You know, all those, I, I just played pretty well, and somebody beat me. It wasn't like I had a two-shot lead and didn't win or something. Or So... None of, them, none of them bother me, and I don't feel like I've had a tournament in my hands. I think that would probably bother me, you know, for some period of time. But, 
mostly, mostly what I take from those is just knowing that kind of what I just talked about. I mean, you're, you're very close. Finishing second, you're playing good enough golf to win a PGA Tour event. Um, and all it takes is just sometimes, you know, sometimes a chip just falls in the edge instead of kind of just missing. Or sometimes you make a putt on the 71st hole that, you know, is 35 feet. Sometimes you don't. And I feel like I'm just one of those times I'm going to have something like that happen and it's going to go the other way. Um, so it's kind of just a waiting game. Keep keep working on the same stuff and getting better and, and eventually things will go the other way. It's been a pretty meteoric rise for you on tour, but is there a progression to get to that point, to, to have everything align and fall into place for you on a certain week? Yeah. Um, I, I think all of us are just out here trying to incrementally get better. I don't think anyone's like there, there's very few people making drastic changes, I, I think. Um, but yeah, I mean, I feel like my golf game is, has definitely changed and gotten better since, you know, my, my corn fairy days. And before then, um, I'm a better professional golfer You know, I'm better at having it be my job. Um, and, yeah, I mean, like anybody, you don't see – everybody kind of says, you know, I won twice, dominated the corn fairy twice. That's not really true. I, I, I finished really well four times in a row to get my status, and then I missed a million cuts. I missed, like, nine of 12 or something, and then won twice. And everybody forgets the middle part. Um, you know, last year I was playing really well. I missed, I missed two or three cuts in a row at one point last year. This year – and this year kind of you look on as, like, you know, it's really – really mediocre maybe by the numbers but I didn't miss a cut from the rocket mortgage until the PGA this year um so I was I kind of in my back of my mind I wanted to go a full year and um I think there's really something to be said for for that even though I haven't had as many high finishes I also have been very consistent and have really mentally grinded my way through to give myself a lot of chances to play well even if I haven't quite converted them into those finishes so I think that's a good sign for me going forward. It's something I'm proud of um, and something I kind of have worked toward this year. Good. Craig and then Adam. Cam, as a New York City street kid, what's it like to be in um, – that's a joke. Yeah, I know. <laughs> you're in foreign country. Um, you're what, the top-ranked player in the field. What, uh, what brings you here and what, 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 how does that affect your expectations as you, uh, as you take to the course? Yeah. It, um, honestly, the, the top-ranked player in the field thing doesn't really – register uh, in my mind just because I feel like every week it doesn't really matter as much like just it's whoever plays well is going to have a chance to win and in, in a lot of the you know in a lot of the majors and stuff it happens to be guys that are ranked very highly in the world because that's why they're the best players in the world but I, I don't by any means expect to play average golf and and be at the top of the leaderboard I, I know that Every week there's 150 other guys that are really, really good at golf trying to beat you. So um, that, that part of it doesn't really do anything uh, mentally to me. I, I feel like for me it was really just a good time in my schedule. I don't love playing the week before a major. I like to be home uh, with my family, able to practice. Um, so for me to, to be able to play this week and have a week at home and then go over rested to the British I think fits my schedule really nicely. Um, and that's really the major thing. I've, I've tried to build my schedule as much as I can around the majors and around those elevated events, and, and this worked out really nicely to add one um, kind of between this last stretch of four ending at the Travelers and the British Open. Adam, go ahead. Hey, Cam, I know you mentioned this earlier. When the results don't exactly match how you're yeah. playing, is that more frustrating for you or motivating to get back out there knowing that you are right there and it's just a couple small things that need to go your way? It's both. Um, you know, I'd love to say it's not frustrating. I'm just excited every week to go see what happens. Um, but, there, yeah, there, there is definitely frustration that comes along with it. I mean, you know, that, uh, that, that stretch at the U.S. Open, I, I worked really, really hard to get back to, you know, having a chance to have what you'd call a, a good finish, I guess. Um, I think I shot maybe two over on, on Thursday and uh, got myself all the way back to, like, three under for the tournament, which – doesn't sound like a lot, but at a U.S. Open, I mean, you guys know how hard that is to do. And um, 
very frustrating for it to go away. I mean, it went away in 25 minutes. It was three days of, like, grinding so hard and playing some really good golf. And literally between the 11th tee and the 13th tee, it all went away, which is kind of the nature of that tournament a little bit. Um, but the other side of that is, you know, I, I was excited the next week to go to travel was because I, I felt like I was more in control of my ball than I was the week before. I was hitting more solid shots. I was more in control of my mind. And, um, you know, I didn't finish well at the Travelers either, but I feel like mentally I had a really good week, and I continued to see a lot of the same things I saw at U.S. Open. So really all I'm doing here is the same thing. I'm, I feel like I'm seeing the same positive signs, um, and as long as I can keep myself, you know, in, in control of my mind and, you know, keep practicing and ingraining the same things, at some point, I know that's good enough to, to compete and, and have a chance to win out here. It's, it's worked before. It's just a matter of putting it together a little bit. What do you attribute to all the younger players that are more uh, prepared to compete when they get out of the tour? I know, you, I know we've beat this into the ground already. You, have, you don't have that win, but you've been extremely successful yeah. since you've started. So what do you attribute that to, that guys are more ready when they get out on tour? Is it something in junior golf or amateur golf? Or how do you kind of see that being as a younger guy out here? Um, I, I think... Through, like, late junior golf and college and amateur golf, I think you're just very aware of what people are doing. I mean, with, with social media and all that stuff, like, there's so much coverage of how guys practice and how they want to get better. And I think it just makes people more aware of what it takes to be really good at this. And anytime you have, you know, a talented 17-year-old at golf and give them ideas, I feel like that's just going to add up to somebody that's more thoughtful and more prepared to play at this level early. Um, so I think that, I mean, it's, it's leading to better competition in college, which is kind of in turn, it's creating a cycle where guys are better and better and more and more prepared to play against people that are better and better. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's been fun. Obviously I, I kind of benefited from some of that. I, we, we had a very good team while I was at Wake Forest. Um, I got to watch Will hit balls every day, which is depressing, and, you know, you can always learn something from it. So, um, yeah, I, I think it's really just a combination of those things. It's, it's guys aware of what professionals are doing and what the best players in the world are doing, and, and having, you know, exposure to that younger is just making people better really early. Hey, Cam, what were you able to find last year as the Rookie of the Year on the PGA Tour that you're still looking to find this year in your two? Um, just in general for the season, like just, uh, um, I don't know. I'm always working on certain things. I mean, I feel like, like the, um, like the driver can be just a huge weapon for me. Um, and I drove it, I think statistically a little better last year than I have this year, but I think recently I've really started to figure out why. And um, even just my non holes today, I was really happy with the way I drove it. So I think bringing some more consistency to that and not it just being like, a, oh, the driver feels good today. Like I hit it straight all day. I, I think something I'm looking for and working on is trying to, you know, put some parameters on why and like figure out ways that when it doesn't feel good, how to, you know, make the ball do something functional as opposed to just like all feel all the time. Um, so that's something that I think I really want to work on and have been working on. Um, we're always practicing some putting stuff. I mean, that's that's kind of a given, I think, for anybody. I mean, I'm, I'm looking for consistency in how I putt. I've had good days. I've had more good days recently than I had for about six months, but I've had some terrible days too. So I'm, I'm working on trying to get those a little closer together, um, hopefully not bringing the good down, but hopefully bringing the bad up a little bit. Um, Really those two things. I feel like the iron game, I, I generally am, am pretty solid. I control my distance pretty well. Uh, I might not be, like, the best wedge player in the world, but I'm not terrible either. Um, so I'm always trying to get a little better at that stuff, but I feel like kind of the two bookends of it, if you drive it well, you're going to be successful on the PGA Tour. And if you putt well, you're going to probably do really, really well on the weeks you drive it well. So, George? Cam, you just came off the course. Mindset with this golf course, this layout, it's a ball striker's 
advantage. Obviously, the bent grass putting comes into play, and it, people score low here. What's your mindset heading into tomorrow? Um, I think it's um, mostly a battle for me of, I think, just some patience. Um, you want to be playing from the fairway. I mean, we've, we've gone out there and kind of decided, you know, each hole, which club gives us the best chance of being in the fairway. Um, because I think out here that's how you're going to get the most birdie putts. And then from there it's just a battle of, you know, knowing that if you hit it 20 feet all day, you just don't make a bunch of 20-footers. But if you're consistent and, you know, you're not making too many mistakes, it's going to add up to something pretty good eventually. You only have to make one or two of them. You don't have to make seven. Um, so it's just a patience battle um, and really just trying to stick to the, the, the game plan that we've, you know, come up with over the last couple of days. I don't know how much attention you pay to news in the online, but, you know, preview for this event, they talked about a weak field in the New York Post, and I was reading it today, and I was thinking it really depends on the lens you look through, because yeah. you've got these up-and-comers, you addressed some of this already, but the, the idea of the, I, I've never heard anyone win a tournament here at the John Deere and say, wow, I wish so-and-so was in the field. Yeah, I think that's a, a pretty good point. I mean, someone like – I'm paired with Ludwig, right? He, I don't know him at all. I don't know what his world ranking is. I have no clue. I'd love to look it up, actually. But whatever it is right now, it's not high enough. He's realistically one of the best players in the world already. Um, I think he's proven that over the last few weeks. Canada and last week at, uh, in Detroit. I can't remember – other ones, but just watching him play, just like the eye, you just can tell. He's very, very good at golf. And whatever he's ranked, it's probably not high enough. So I think there's some element of that. And then there's also the element of, you know, anyone that wants to call, a, you know, a PGA Tour field weak is, is probably not correct. Um, there's you, – you can't call any – you can't call any really PGA Tour sanctioned field weak. I mean, like the Canadian Tour, the competition's amazing. Corn Ferry Tour is, is really strong. It's a very difficult tour to play on. Out here is obviously very difficult um, to succeed. And I think it's just not a realistic way to look at it. I mean, any, any one field on the PGA Tour, there's 150 really good golfers. And it's, it's just a battle of who plays well that week. Hey, he's 528, by the way. Is he actually? <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's not right. <laughs> he might be. Like, yeah. With a bullet. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Craig, go Cam, ahead. you were part of uh, looking ahead to the British Open. You were part of a, a, a pretty epic passion play uh, right in the middle of it uh, uh, a year ago on Sunday um, with all the things that were involved in Rory and Cam Smith. Um, do you, have you reflected on that? Have you reflected on your experience at St. Andrews? And have you have you thought about um, have you thought about going back and, and, and what that second place finish really meant to you? Yeah. Um, I don't know. Obviously that I was really proud of the golf I played down the stretch there. Um, it's, it's a fun time. I mean, Cameron was obviously playing really, really well. Um, Rory was right behind us and we knew everything he did because everyone was rooting for Rory. I don't think anyone even knew I was there. Um, but yeah, it's, it's another chance to win a major championship. All, all those are good. I mean, even if you're, even like what happened to me at the U.S. Open, just being, being there just a little bit gets some juices flowing that, that aren't always there. And um, I, I just remember those last three holes, 16, 17, are really difficult driving holes if you hit driver. Um, and I knew that I probably had to have, you know, a, two putts for birdie and a putt for two to have any chance to win. And kind of standing on 16, I looked at Caddy Chad, I'm just like, He's kind of wants me to hit five iron over there, left on 16. I was like, Chad, I, I'm not going to win the tournament hitting five iron. He's like, I'm going to hit driver. He's like, okay, buddy. It's your line. And I, I hit three of the best drives I've hit in my life in a row, you know, on the 70th, 71st, and 72nd holes of a major at the Open Championship at St. Andrews. And I don't know. There's something about that that even though I didn't win, to me, proves that I can um, because, you know, it just doesn't take much. Like, you look at the putts Cameron Smith made the very last couple holes, the two putt he made on 17 from, like, short of the, the death bunker left. 
Um, and then obviously a really good up and down on 18. There's any of that could have not happened. It could have been a playoff, and then you never know. So, um, yeah, it, it was a cool week, and, and I really enjoyed it. And I, I think um, I'm really proud of some of the golf I played that week. Oh, man. Let's see. The front was like three today, and the back might be four or five. So seven to eight, I would say. Maybe nine. Depending on, Depending on yeah, soft to fairways, directional wind. Um, kind of the drivable hole, I think it's 14. Um, that one like could be not driver, just depending on wind and hole location. So I would say somewhere at seven to nine, um, depending on the day. Let's wrap it up with Tom. Two things real quick. Pretty magical year last year. How did that, what did that do to your mindset for this year? How do, you, how do you follow up a year like that that, you know, kind of comes out of nowhere? Um, I don't know. I mean, I think, it, uh, I think it definitely made me more comfortable out here. I mean, even, even still, like, President's Cup time, I was still like, man, am I really allowed to be sitting here? Um, so I think, I think having a little time away and coming back to it Having done all of that, I, I think made me a lot more comfortable, you know, starting the season like Zozo, CJ Cup, and then starting at Century uh, in the winter, in January. I, I think that, I think having the little time to separate, like, all the good stuff that happened to me over the course of last year, got to sit on that for a month or two and come back. And I think by the time I got back, I was much more comfortable than I had left. Um, and and I, I think just even... The simple things like, you know, knowing this second year on tour, like a lot of the places are the same. The places I've been before, I don't, I'm not like, man, I don't know where the locker room is this week. I think just overall getting to, to play in all the big events and getting to experience all of that last year has just helped make me more comfortable. Um, it's really just, you know, it's just experience playing on the PGA Tour. It's, it's one of those things. As you get more of it, things feel more like home. You get more comfortable, and, and that's kind of been the difference between the two years for me. Last one. Tom. I don't know if you know the history of this tournament. 23 first-time winners here. Mm -hmm. Do Did you know that number, and does you know? do you think, oh, okay, if those 23 can do it, you know, maybe this could be my week? Um, or do you go in thinking every week this could? Yeah, be to be completely honest, not at all. Um, yeah, I, I, I didn't know that about the tournament. I feel like now that I think about it, it I kind of, it kind of rings a little bit of a bell that that's been a trend. Um, but honestly, I really thought the first time I was going to win a PGA Tour event might have been like like the PGA Championship last year, which would have been you know kind of a rare one. Um, so there's, there's been plenty of times that I've thought it in totally random places. You know, I've thought it everywhere from, from the Open Championship to the Sanderson Farms to Riviera. Honestly, I hit it pretty good this morning, so who knows. Um, but it's just a battle every week trying to go out and, and do my job the best I can. Um, and, uh, you know, eventually that's going to turn out with nobody beating me by one. Um, so I'm just kind of trying to keep keep plugging along, keep you know pounding the stone, and eventually it'll break. All right, maybe yeah. all the bounces will go your way. This yeah, week. thanks for your so. time Thank and you uh, appreciate it, and good luck this week.